السلام علیکم اینڈ ہائی ویورس دس از سجاد حسین اینڈ یو آر واچنگ مائی یوٹیوب چینل ویلکم ٹو ٹوڈیز ویڈیو ان وچ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی اے پوئم بائی جان ڈن اینڈ دا نیم آف دا پوئم از دا گڈ مورو جان ڈن از اے میٹا فزیکل پوئٹ آف دا سیونٹین سینچری اینڈ میٹا فزیکل پوئٹری از اے ہائیلی انٹلیکچولائزڈ فارم آف پوئٹری اینڈ دا موسٹ امپارٹنٹ ایسپیکٹ of this poetry is the use of conceit now what is conceit it is a far fetched image or symbol or comparison or metaphor that is employed by the poet so for the sake of simplicity i am going to divide this poem into three sections in the first part i will discuss with you the explanation of the poem the paraphrase of the poem and the second part i will talk about the theme or themes that are there and in the last section we would discuss the stylistic aspects of the poem now let's start the poem i wonder by my troth the speaker in the first stanza talks to his beloved and he puts a questionnaire in front of her he poses a few questions to his beloved now these questions are not meant to be answered in fact these questions have been put forth by the speaker by the lover only to highlight what he actually intends to suggest he wants to say that before both these two entered into a relationship with each other their life was pleasureless their life was purposeless their life was bland it was bleak it was colorless it was charmless and after consummating their love and after joining that relationship of love their life has got a new meaning it has got a new intensity it has got a new force and impetus so he says i wonder by my troth now by my troth is a sort of oath for example by my fidelity or by my faithfulness what thou and i did till we loved what did we do before we loved which means that we didn't do anything were we not weaned till then now weaning is something that is important what is weaning an infant is nursed and milked by its mother slowly and gradually with the passage of time that uh, baby that infant is uh, fed on different diet on different uh, food items so that process in which the baby moves away from sucking and feeding from its mother to that diet that is called weaning were we not weaned till then but sucked on country players sucked means fed on country players mean simple players childishly means foolishly so they had simple players and they had childish players or snorted we means slept snorted means slept we in the seven sleepers den den is a cave now this is important because this is a biblical reference around 250 ad decius was the roman emperor and he persecuted those who had uh, become christians so these seven people went to hide themselves in a cave in order to escape from the persecution and prosecution by this roman emperor and when it was known by this emperor he closed the door of that cave that entry or that entrance of that cave as a result these people were caught there and after almost 300 years 
they were found out sleeping there and they were alive there so this is the reference and this is there in the quran as well they have been called ashabe kaf it was so but this all players fancies be all these players before the relationship of love were fancies if ever any beauty i did see which i desired and got it was but a dream of the there was no other pleasure there was no other joy that was available to the speaker the only joy that he can recollect the only joy that he can remember is that desire of being loved and that desire of dream of his beloved and now good morrow to our waking souls now these two lovers have just got up so they bid and they say good morning to each other which watch not one another out of fear now their relationship is close they are not afraid of their relationship as they used to be for love all of for all love of other sides controls and makes one little room and everywhere now it is because of the power of love and it is because of the relationship of love and it is because of that intensity of that love that the little room which they share with each other has become the entire world this has assumed cosmic and universal importance and significance for these lovers let's see discoverers to new worlds have gone let maps to other worlds on worlds have shown let us possess one world each hath one and is one now the speaker the lover is of the view that it is a time of sea discoveries it is a time of geographic exploration but he is least concerned with these he is of the view that the discoverers and explorers should continue with their adventures and with their campaigns and the maps of the world should be reshaped and revamped and uh, remade but he is only interested in one thing and which is let us possess one world each hath one and is one they want to be each other's world and in this limited world and in this small world there is no space for anyone else my face in thine eye yes this is the world that they enjoy my face in thine means your eye thy thine in mine appears thine means your face appears in my eye and my face appears in your eye and true plain hearts do in the faces rest and the hearts of each other have started to reside and have started to live in their faces where can we find two better hemispheres now this is the conceit that uh, i taught talked about in the beginning that metaphysical poetry is popular because of the use of conceits now look at this comparison these two lovers have been compared to two hemispheres hemispheres are the north pole and the south pole two parts of the equator without sharp north at the north pole there is intense cold and there is ice without declining west and at the west pole there is uh, heat and there is intensity of heat so these two are like two opposite poles whatever dies was not mixed equally now this is very important the poet is of the view that uh, whatever perishes and whatever dies and whatever receives its date 
and whatever decays and whatever gets perished is because of the fact that there is no equilibrium there is no balance there is no harmony in that thing so absence of balance and absence of equilibrium and ex absence of poise is the result of each and everything in the world now this seems to be highly philosophical but these two lovers are blessed in that they are supplementing each other and they are complementing each other and these two lovers support each other and these two lovers balance each other so the the speaker is of the view that they are not going to die in fact they are going to become eternal and they are going to become immortal if our two loves be one or thou and i love so alike that none do slacken slacken means weaken becoming become weak none can die so he is of the view that uh, neither of the two can become weak and neither of the two can die because both sustain each other and both strengthen each other and both balance each other and the death is all because of imbalance so they need not fear their death now this is the explanation or this is the paraphrase of this poem if you look at this poem you see that uh, love is an important theme and eternity of love and it is because of love that the speaker and the beloved think themselves to be eternal and immortal now this is the mystic significance of love and before they were in their relationship of love life was quite odd and life was quite useless and it was quite purposeless and it was quite uh, bleak but now it has uh, got new dimensions it has attained new proportions it has uh, got new exaltations and this is the power of love according to the speaker now if we look at this poem stylistically we come to know that the poem is divided into three stanzas of seven lines each and the rhyme scheme in the first four lines is a b a b i and childish lee and then and then now if you look at this rhyme scheme i and childish lee these two rhyme with each other but this is a sla slant rhyme this is not plain rhyme this is slant rhyme and these most of these lines are in the form of iambic pentameter except the last line of each stanza which has 12 syllables iambic pentameter means that each line has 10 syllables but this last line has 12 syllables we see that alliteration is there like this assonance is there consonance is there and this is how apostrophe has been employed now what is apostrophe when words are contracted and when there is a use of a word that uh, certain letters are omitted and these are not pronounced it is called apostrophe for example instead of it was it was it was i is missing here it has been omitted so this is apostrophe and uh, we also come to know that uh, anaphora has been employed what is anaphora when uh, the first words of the lines are repeated that is called anaphora for example let 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 in these three lines this word has been repeated so this is uh, called anaphora 
if you look at uh, the structure of these stanzas you come to know that the first line is enjammed with the rest of the lines of the stanza which means that the first line runs into all other lines when we read the first line the meaning is complete when we join this first line of the three stanzas and uh, when we read this first line joining with the rest of the lines or the subsequent lines of each stanza viewers i hope the poem is clear to you and uh, all the aspects are clear now thank you very much keep watching keep following thank you